Welcome back, folks. We had the Dow Industrials finish up 305, Nasdaq up 51, S&P's up 25. And let's welcome our man, Mr. Chris Gaffney, back. Chris, folks, is the president of Everbank World Markets. And it was so cool because the last time we had him on, uh, that is when the Swiss decided that they were going to basically unlink from, from the euro. Uh, Chris, of course, is the president of Everbank World Markets. And as you're over at our website at TFNN, folks, you can hit that Everbank banner or you can just go to everbank.com slash TFNN. Chris Gaffney, welcome back to TFNN. Well, thanks. It's great to be here. You know, Chris, this is, it's so cool because the last time you were here, we had the Swiss basically on Lincoln. What I'd love to talk a little bit about today is this. You know, up north, okay, you know, of course, we're across the country, but up north, you have this wicked weather coming in. The cold front has been amazing. And when down in Florida, okay, where we are, uh, this is peak season. And in peak season, in the real estate market, approximately 50% of the units in the Tampa, St. Pete, Clearwater area are Canadians. And, you know, we happen to be in that business in a small way, but we, in a pretty big way, but in a small way, okay? And it's so intriguing because when we're talking world markets and when we're talking money, the correlation from this year to last year is pretty dramatic. And specifically, like, let's say a normal short-term unit, folks, goes for 4,000 U.S. a month. Well, what ends up happening is that the fluctuation from year to year has been really from like 4,100 to 4,900. So what I'd love to talk to you about, because we talk to our clients about this and we let them know that, listen, they can protect themselves with one of your accounts every year, meaning that they can transfer money and at least they know what, they're gonna, what their bill is going to be. So can you explain how these accounts work? Sure. I mean, we have foreign currency accounts where uh, investors can uh, place funds into any of the foreign currencies and uh, protect the um, the value of that currency versus the U.S. dollar. Now, um, you know the you, you spoke about the Swiss National Bank and and uh, what happened last time I was on the show yes. with the Swiss uh, the Swiss currency uh, running up dramatically in value. Um, in general, the dollar has been stronger here recently, but. Um, today we saw the uh, the euro jump about one and a half percent after some good news from Greece. So, um, you know, with the euro jumping up like that, um, it actually makes things uh, a, a bit uh, more expensive for those traveling over to Europe, uh, obviously, um, and, and for European um, visitors to Florida or for Canadian visitors down to uh, down to Florida. Um, you know, with the dollar strength that we've had, uh, that's actually made things a little more expensive for uh, uh, for foreign tourists into into the U.S. Yes, and you know what's so cool is this, folks. Okay, so as Chris said, I mean, and I think my personal take is that you know the dollar has been running higher since 2011. My my take is that it's time for a breather. Um, right. And you know, so the Canadian dollar today is 124. And what is what what I what I love about how the the bank accounts are set up, Chris is that at least you know what the bill is. Do you know what I mean? Like when we gave people our bills last year, right? You know, the, the, basically the bills were like 4,200 or something, okay? Those bills, when they're coming in right now, 4,900, you know? Right. So right. it's really cool if you have an account set up like that so you know what you're paying. And, and it, listen, it can be more or less, you're not trying to do that. All you're trying to do is make a budget for yourself. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, then corporations do it all the time. I mean, that's what, uh, you know, the, the foreign exchange market is the, uh, by far the largest daily volume market um, of any of them traded, and that's yes. because corporations need to uh, fix their costs. So, so corporations do it all the time in, in trying to fix their costs by buying um, the currency that their contract is denominated in. So, you, you know, Everbank allows uh, retail clients, individuals, to do the same thing through uh, opening foreign currency accounts here at uh, uh, in, in denominated in those foreign currencies that um, they know they're going to owe either U.S. dollars or the foreign currency. Yes. Now, uh, when we talk currency, uh, let's talk a little uh, precious metal currency. Yeah. Uh, so you also have precious metal accounts. We sure do. Uh, we have unallocated accounts in gold, silver, platinum, and palladium. And um, there's a lot 
you know, uh, a lot written and a, a lot of news on, on gold and silver. But, you know, platinum and palladium are two precious metals that don't get as much attention. And, and uh, uh, the thing driving those markets right now are automobile sales. You know, platinum sure. and palladium are used uh, um, in pollution control and, and the catalytic converters in automobiles. And, um, you know, we've all seen uh, automobile sales start moving back uh, up. And, and certainly the demand over in China and some of the emerging markets in Latin America for uh, more automobile sales is driving those markets. And I, I think really um, supplying a, uh, a real uh, push on the um, demand side for platinum and palladium. So those are two precious metals that may be overlooked by a lot of retail investors. Uh, gold and silver get a lot of the attention, but you know there's some opportunities in platinum and palladium also. And you know what's so cool, folks? Okay, so so picture this: gold right now, folks, is 1260. Platinum is at 1235. Okay, and just so if, if we start taking tons of dirt. The bottom line is that, you know, it takes 10 tons of dirt to get an ounce of gold. Basically, I'm averaging this out. Platinum, folks, is one of the hardest metals to get out of the stone. And, in fact, you know, I know you know this, Chris, but most of the time, platinum is always a couple hundred dollars over gold. So this is a very different air that when we have platinum that basically is at the same price. So actually, that platinum is uh, $60 cheaper than gold right now, yeah. which is it, a mind blow. It's a good opportunity. Yeah, it, it really is. is. And, and then, you know, and, and what happens with platinum, of course, as you just said, platinum gets used. You know, it gets used up, you know. It's got the industrial demands, and yeah, as they put them in those catalytic converters, you do have some recycling um, of the metals, but okay. uh, again, not nearly as much, and, and certainly much, uh, a lot of industrial demand for those metals. The, the, uh, the, the investing demand is just starting to, to heat up also, so, you know, again, uh, I keep pointing over to Asia and China, but, sure. you know, with the growth of China and India, you know, those are some pretty big economies. And, and precious metals are seen over there in their cultures as, as a better store of wealth. You know, they, they don't, um, like we may go down and buy some stocks or put some money right. in, in the bank. Um, in India and in China and in those cultures, um, they're much more um, uh, probable to go down and, and buy some precious metals to store their wealth. No, so, you, you, it, um, there's it's no, just a cultural difference. It is, and, and, and it's worked for them over the years beyond belief. I mean, that, that's the reality. And their, their disposable income is increasing as their economies grow. Uh, India's uh, thought that it's going to grow at an even faster clip than China this year. And as we see those middle classes emerge and, and evolve, uh, you're going to see more disposable income and more of that income going into the precious metals and demand in China and India, which should serve to drive prices higher and, and again, uh, makes a pretty compelling story for the precious metals investment. It does. Now, you know, we have a lot of listeners that no doubt are in the markets every day. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, the commodity market in general has got hurt. Uh, we get a lot of calls here basically about iron ore. Um, and what's intriguing is that I've been looking at the Australian dollar. And, you know, what has happened, folks, is this, and it's pretty amazing, okay? You know, the Australian dollar is one of the strongest dollars in the world. Uh, you know, for when the commodity boom was up there, you know, we're talking, you know, a buck eight, and now we're at 77. So what gets intriguing there is that, realistically, even if you weren't going to Australia, but if you thought that the iron ore market or some of those commodities were bottoming out, uh, that's where you can open an account and do it in Australia. Well, I can give you American dollars and convert to Australian dollars, right? Right. And Aussie is definitely a commodity-driven um, currency, uh, along with New Zealand, uh, yeah. uh, you know, Canadian, uh, maybe less so Brazil. But, uh, you know, today Aussie is even cheaper. The, the, the central bank there cut rates. Uh, um, or no, they, they, I'm sorry, they, they had recently cut rates. So, um, you know, the, the, the Australian dollar, again, is, has been under some selling pressure here recently. Sure. Um, but as you suggested, um, it is down substantially. And, and of course, you know, you, you, it's tough to call a bottom. We don't try to pretend no, like we can right, call a bottom right. uh, of any market. But um, you certainly look at the trends and, and look for values. Yeah, no doubt. You know, it's got to be really cool uh, looking at all these different currencies every day uh, and, and mechanized-wise putting it all together, right? <laughs> 
it, it's enjoying it, it, it's you know i love it uh, yeah. i really do and, and it's uh it's a fun job it changes every day um it, it's exciting uh, it's a great and, it's a great I, service for the public i mean it's yeah, a huge we, we service love, you know we preach the power of diversification we we like watching the uh the markets but um you know most u.s investors when you talk about diversification they they talk about how much they have allocated to stocks and how much they have allocated to bonds and that's their diversification yeah. and, and and we like to remind people that you know hard assets adding currencies are 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 metals those different asset classes to your portfolio um can really reduce risk overall on the portfolio it's and uh, increase return. It's huge. Listen, folks, Everbank's phone number is 855-750-4051. Chris, thanks so much. Look forward to having you again. You bet. Thanks.